So now we have a kind of a, a, a template for an enemy, right? And all of our enemies are gonna contain the enemy template base functionality with the collider, et cetera, and the two waypoints, right? But what we want to have different um, is the artwork and a few other things. So what we're gonna do is we are going to keep this as a prefab and in the, in the project view, we are going to right click on enemy waypoints and we're gonna to go to create prefab variant. So this will be enemy waypoints blob. So what this is, is this is a new asset which will maintain its relationship to the enemy waypoints, but allows us to make changes within it, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna double click it to open it in prefab mode, and we are going to add our blob art, right? And we can see we get a plus sign here, meaning this object is added, and that is now an override in our list of uh, we need to see it on this prefab. That is now an override here, right? We added this game object. So theoretically, we could apply that back to enemy waypoints. We don't want to do that, right? But just so you can see. Um, and this kind of also acts as, as almost like a version control type system because we can revert the changes or we can revert some of the changes. Um, so it adds a kind of a layer of editing safety as well. Um, and so now we've added our art, right? Let's go ahead and make a small change here to the, let's just move the collider up a little bit. And that is gonna be reflected as an override as well. As you can see, right, there it is. We can see the difference, right? Here's the, the overridden change version and here's the original version. We've already assigned the waypoints. And so now we have our blob variant on the enemy template base. So what we're gonna do is, that's good for now. We're going to go ahead and go to enemy waypoints and we're going to create another variant and this is going to be the bat. Now, we could create variants on variants. We'll actually look at that in a second. Uh, but for now, let's just repeat the process, right? We're going back up to our template and we're gonna drop in our bat art, make that a child, reset it. And I think he wants to be facing this way, if I remember correctly. And we wanna just move that art up a little bit so that it will kind of align with the collider, more or less, a little bit more. That's good enough. And so now we have these two variants, right? And so what we're gonna do is we are going to place those into our level one scene. Now what I'm gonna do just to make this simple is I'm just gonna make our level generator always generate chunks of level one uh, and we can just have it generate one, one segment um, just for our demo. And so let's go ahead and open level one for editing in prefab mode, right? So now we have the base in here but we don't actually want that anymore. We wanna replace it with the variant. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna go ahead and let's drop in our blob. And I'm gonna drop him right here. So he looks like he's sitting on the ground with the waypoints. Okay, so now that we've added our blob, let's add in our bat. And let's position, we'll position him up here over this gap. And so now if we return, that'll auto save. If we return to the scene view, we can test. Okay, so we can see we have our slime, right, patrolling between his waypoints. Um, it's a little messed up with the bush and the rock there. Uh, but, and then we have our bat also uh, patrolling its waypoints as well. So we can see that, and right, that level one start is being spawned at runtime and the, we have our, enemies as nested prefabs, 